When you're navigating the many intricate and confusing corridors and hallways of caverns in the world of Subnautica, it's extremely easy to get lost. You lose your bearings, you don't know which way you came from, and your oxygen is running out, and that can be a really stressful situation. Now because of that, I find it particularly funny that one of the most intricate and complicated areas in the game, at least layout-wise, would straight up have lost in its name. And that area will be the topic of this video. That's right, today we will be talking about the Lost River. I'll be telling you everything we know about this area, how it divides into smaller sub-areas, what kind of flora and fauna inhabit it, what hazards you can find in there, and any other interesting points of trivia that I'm able to dig up. Now of course, just as with any other lore video, I have to preface this by saying that this video will contain spoilers to the story and world of Subnautica. So if you haven't had the chance to play it yourself and you don't want to have any of it spoiled, I strongly recommend clicking off this video and coming back to it later. Now with that out of the way, make sure you have plenty of oxygen, get a map ready, and let's go. Now first of all, the Lost River is a massive cave-like biome, mostly green in hue and very recognizable due to its aesthetic, that can mostly be accessed by four separate locations, one in each of the Bloodkill zones, one in the deep Grand Reef, and another one in the mountains. In general, the specifics of this biome can range greatly both in terms of depth and in terms of flora and fauna, with the depth ranging everywhere from 550 meters all the way down to about 1000 meters deep, and with the flora going from areas that are fully inhabited with lots of intricate plants to ones that barely have any. The two things, however, that are mostly prevalent all throughout this biome is one, the extremely frigid temperatures, in fact making this the coldest biome out there, and also an often present layer of brine that can be found towards the floor, which also happens to give off the aesthetic of a river, which is presumably how the area got its name, that will in fact hurt the player if you go into it without proper equipment. Now because of how complicated and intricate this area can get, we will be dividing it the same way as the game divides it, which is into 7 separate sections, and we will be very briefly talking about each of them independently and how they fit into the overall scheme. For the purposes of this video, we will always be working our way from the entrances to the Lost River towards what is, well essentially, its core or its middle. Now starting us off, if you happen to be in the Blood Kelp Zone and you would like to enter the Lost River, you will have to make your way through the so-called Corridor. Now this connecting area can mostly be recognized by structures of pie coral decorating the floor and the walls, and also the very large amount of crab squids which seem to inhabit this area. In terms of resources, these will mostly be the same thing, give or take a few, all throughout the Lost River, but we're mostly talking about copper ore, diamonds, gel sacks, gold, titanium deposits, lithium quartz, or rubies. Now, in terms of flora, you can mostly find brine lilies here, which seem to be a combination between a sunflower and a water lily, and can be surprisingly rare. Or, of course, the aforementioned gel sacks, which are small structures with a bunch of pink postules on them that can either be picked up or harvested if you use the knife on them. But moving on from the corridor, and we quickly reach the bone fields. Now, this is obviously a very iconic area of the Lost River, mostly due to the fact that it houses the skeleton of what is the biggest creature that we have ever seen, or well technically not seen, but presumably had existed in the world of Subnautica at some point in time. Now this area very much serves as a connection, being tied both to the corridor and also to the Ghost Canyon which we'll be covering in a second, and the Junction which is another follow-up area which goes after this one. Now this area is much more of a larger open cavern, mostly so that it can accommodate that giant skeleton, but because of that, it also invites some hostile fauna, such as a juvenile ghost leviathan that the player should really be wary of if they're going through here. In terms of resources, there's a whole bunch more large deposits that the player can find in this area, and while the flora is mostly the same as the corridors, with the exception of the crab claw kelp, wow, try seeing that three times in a row, which is an interesting almost tree-like structure with a somewhat wooden trunk, and also the slightly bioluminescent ghost weed. 
Now before we move on from this area, it is also worth noting that some very intricate rock formations can be found on the ceiling, which as of right now, we don't exactly know how they got created, but of course, we can continue thinking. Oh yeah, and technically speaking, there is also a small cave system that you can access by going underneath the skeleton that will house more resources if you're in the need of farming, however you should of course be very careful as these caves are mostly covered in the poisonous brine. Now moving on just a little bit from that, let's talk about the Ghost Canyon, which is another entrance into the Lost River and happens to also connect to the aforementioned bone fields. Now this is just a very quick run through area that you can get to from the deep granite reef, which on its own only really has one major interest point, and that being the abandoned ancient skeleton with the Lost River laboratory cache that was supposedly set up there to study said skeleton. In terms of resources in the flora, this is nothing we haven't seen before, however in terms of fauna this is slightly more rich, presumably due to some creatures migrating from deep Grand Reef, as individuals from ghost rays, reginalds or spinefish can also be found here. Now moving on from there and covering the final entrance into the Lost River, we get to talk about the ghost forest. Now in my humble opinion this is one of the, if not the best looking part of the Lost River with its many intricate systems of roots and glowing plants that make the place look truly magical. Now on its own the Ghost Forest is a massive cave opening entrance that you can access from the Northern Blood Kilp Zone which also coincidentally houses what can be presumed to be a juvenile of the gargantuan leviathan that can be found in the bone fields. Now in terms of fauna, this being an entrance, it is once again surprisingly rich with a whole bunch of river prowlers and ghost rays inhabiting the areas between the plants and also a ghost leviathan in the area which you should definitely be wary of if you're going through there. Now if you either followed along from the bone fields or you entered through the ghost forest, what you will now arrive to is basically the main connecting area of the Lost River, also known as the Junction. Now the junction on its own is this large plateau that can be surrounded by pools of brine and also some brine waterfalls if you want to call them, already showing hints of warming up due to the various vents that can be found around the location which do also hint at the impending contact with the inactive lava zone that comes not too far after. Now for most people the main interest point of this location will be the disease research facility which can be found in the east, however for others what might also be interesting to find out is that the sea dragon leviathan skeleton that can be found here was in fact that specific sea dragon leviathan which attacked the disease research facility causing it to sink and essentially release the Kara virus, so by extension that skeleton that you're looking at in the junction is responsible for the entire demise of the ecosystem of planet 4546b. Now in terms of resources and fauna, this is very similar to many of the areas we've mentioned beforehand and also very closely tied to the areas that it's connecting, with the singular exception being that you can find some green table coral lining the walls of this area. Now finally, we have two more locations to cover, both of which are connected to the junction, one of them being the mountains corridor and the other one being the tree co. Now the mountains corridor is, well, as its name suggests, mostly a corridor or a tunnel that leads from the disease research facility towards the mountains and eventually the bulb zone. There is nothing specifically particular about this area except for one ghost leviathan which can be found guarding the tunnel if you will and several other smaller skeletal remains of unidentifiable creatures which can be found lying throughout. It is also worth noting here however that there is a large pit in this location which will eventually drop into the inactive lava zone. Now in terms of resources and fauna, this is a fairly rich area considering that you're again escaping from the frigid deadly depths of the Lost River and moving towards an exit with a whole bunch of mushrooms and seeds being found around the area as well as some particular plants such as the veined nettle or the violet blue. And finally, just to end this off, I left the best or in my opinion coolest for last which is in fact the tree cove. And Going back to what I said, I think this is most likely what people would mark as the coolest looking area of the Lost River, being mostly a large, somewhat circular cavern with a huge glowing cove tree in the middle surrounding by tons of ghost rays that are circling the large ghost leviathan eggs which can be found in the center. Now interestingly enough, while this area is also 
covered in brine at the bottom, this one does not actually damage the player upon contact. And it is also worth noting that there is another drop off towards the inactive lava zone in the very back of this chamber. Oh yeah, and interestingly enough, despite the giant tree in the middle, this area is technically speaking the most barren in terms of flora from the whole Lost River, considering the fact that besides that tree, you can only find several gel stacks and deep shrooms around. Now that is essentially all that we are outright given by the game, but just before we end this video off, I want to really quickly talk about some other lore points that I think you guys might find interesting. Now obviously, at its current stage, the Lost River is a very intricate and complex biome to get around in. However, what is perhaps even more interesting is the fact that it clearly seems that this biome was heavily affected by the volcanic activity of the planet, and that its layouts and topology have shifted greatly ever since the days of the Gargantuan Leviathan. This information can be gathered both from getting some of the alien caches and scanning some of the skeletons in this area which will hint towards the fact that this location, back in the day, used to look vastly different. Also, even though this area in many places might seem somewhat devoid of life, I do like to think that that could partially be because the Caravirus actually started spreading from this location Meaning that whatever species used to inhabit this area beforehand were most likely hit with the largest doses and would probably succumb to it before it could even get to the Sea Emperor at the bottom of the game which would then be able to produce some antidotes which the peepers could spread around. But of course, that is just my theory and is not right now in any way confirmed by the game. But with that, I want to end the video off and I hope you guys enjoyed and learned at least something new about the wonderful world of Sonatica. If you did, maybe consider leaving a like, commenting or subscribing, all of those would be very much appreciated. And if you have a theory or any facts that I missed that you would like to propose, make sure to put them down into the comments as well, I would very much like to read both of those things. Now with that, I want to wish you a beautiful rest of the day, and I'll see you all in whatever next video I make. Bye bye.